Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted the ramshackle barricades for Kill Team Octarius. These are the three ramshackle barricades included in the Octarius box, and in this video, I'll go through the techniques that you could use to paint all three of them. And this is what they look like at the end, but we'll be using this first one in the front of the image here as our example throughout this video. You may have already seen my other video on how to paint scrap piles, but in this video, I'll be doing some different techniques for the yellow and the red sections. I'll be using the Octarius book as my reference, and if you flick to page 73 of that book, you can see it's got the ramshackle barricade here, and it's a great example, so I'll be using that for all the colors in this piece. Ideally, you want to be using a lead belcher spray to prime your models, but I didn't have any, so I used this Mechanica Standard Grey, which is going to work just great, and just follow the instructions on the back, telling you like how long to shake it for and the temperature to keep it at. It's really important. You'll see lots of contrast paints in this video, but I'll put a list of every paint we use in the description below, as well as some links so you can save 20% off of the retail price. Okay, let's get started. And now I'm taking a base paint of lead belcher and this very vegan makeup brush. Got it for like about a pound in the local pound shop or dollar store. You can get something very similar to this. I'm gonna use this to do a very quick overbrush of this lead belcher. So you can see I've got a good amount of paint on the brush there. And I'm just gonna go in circular motions all over the model to give it one even coat. And I'm just gonna do one coat all over and that's gonna be plenty for this technique. And anything I miss will be kind of covered by that nice dark grey underneath. So it doesn't take long at all to do this, but ideally you want to be using the lead belcher spray and then you could um, completely take this step out of the process. Once that dried, I took some contrast grift hound orange and this is going to go on all the sections that are going to be red. And this is different to how I did the um, scrap piles in the previous video. And what this is going to do is almost going to serve as a highlight. So you're going to get an orange highlight coming out from the red that we'll paint over this later on. So this is a different technique. I think this work works really well. I've used this a lot on the miniatures for different games like Warcry, and you get a really nice orange highlight, which really is a great color to highlight any reds. So you can put the red on uh, straight out of the pot, or you can wet it down with some contrast medium for different effects. So really worth exploring and playing around with it. But while I had the paint, I thought I'd just try out this out, and I painted some in the recesses very scruffily of all these beams which are going to be super rusty so I wanted this to add a little bit of depth and just give that kind of orange background color which will layer up with lots of other paints as we go through this video. Next I took some Avalon Sunset this is a base paint and this is going to go on all the yellow sections this is a really nice color that matches really closely to the images in the Octarius box set books and this is different to the technique I use on those scrap piles where I use the contrast paint. And I found this works a lot better as a base. I will be putting a contrast paint over the top of this later on, but this is really important to do two nice coats of this on all the yellow sections. So wait for the first coat to completely dry and then put another coat over the top. I tried with the contrast of Yandon Yellow straight over Lead Belcher and just found it didn't work that well for the effect I wanted on these pieces of terrain. And so then I did a layer of wraith bone and then painted over it again with the and yellow contrast paint i didn't really like that all that much either so i thought i'd go for this more bold yellow and i think this is going to work a lot nicer next i took some contrast black templar and then this is going to go on the section that is like a big tire and there's also some black panels above that section of like the flyer which we're going to paint red. So just painting that in, doing quite a lot of paint with this. You can be quite generous with a black Templar. It dries really nicely, certainly not patchy at all. And so a nice coat, as long as it's a nice even coat, this is going to look great. And this pretty much obscures all the lead belcher from underneath. So you get the, the rubber look that you'd want from that tire. But um, some other paints though, certainly contrast paints are a lot thinner and you'll see that metal coming through. As you can see with the orange, that looks metallic, whereas the black just doesn't. So some paints are a lot stronger than others and it's really just experimenting and practicing with the different contrast paints to get used to what you can do with each one. So with this black one, it really is good at hiding whatever comes underneath. If you've been enjoying these videos I've been doing for Kill Team, Warcry, loads of other games, then it'd be awesome if you could check out my Patreon page. 
There's some awesome perks there and different membership levels. And we've got a Discord community where we hang out, talk about the hobby and just help each other out if we've got any questions. And it's a really fun place, a great community. And it'd be awesome if you could join us there too. So I'll put a link for that in the description below as well. And it'd be brilliant if you could check it out. Okay, let's get back to the painting and now it's time for some contrast gillum and flesh and this is going to go over all the beams and I want these really rusty beams so that orange is really going to come through this but we're still going to put more layers on later on. So when you do this stage, don't worry, you're not going to cover it up um, and you still want to see a lot of it coming through because that's going to add to the overall effect at the end. So I'm being quite generous, putting a fair bit on. You know, I'm not flooding it, not going crazy, but a decent amount. And this is going to give us a nice bronze effect on some of these pipes as well. So I'm just popping it on there, using the textures of the model to get that paint off the brush. And on any areas where there's lots of bumps, I'm just using that texture to get that paint out of there. Then I took some contrast agarus dunes, and this is going to be perfect for all these more gold color spikes that are bolted on and they're dotted around. I'll also pick out some pipes on the model and some sections where I think it would use a nice different color to just mix it up a little bit. So it's really nice to have all these different colors running through different sections of the model. And so that really breaks it up and adds to the appeal, makes it a lot more interesting to look at. And I think it works really nicely. So sometimes it's good to just stand back for a little bit of a distance and just pick out spots where you think that color might work. Now I'm moving on to the Iandin yellow contrast, and it seems a bit weird to use a yellow contrast over a yellow base paint, but this can work really nicely. The Iandin yellow is really like an orangey, rich yellow, like an egg yolk, if you like, and that's gonna change this up a little bit, give a bit more texture to it, pick out those little like dimples, bullet holes, uh, little scratches, and it's gonna go in there and just give it a little bit of shade. Not a lot, but we're gonna rough it up later on anyway, but this is just gonna mix it up a little bit and just bring out the texture a little bit more. And then while I've got that paint, I'm gonna go over these light bulbs. And now this is where using contrast over lead belcher can work really nicely. This is gonna be a really good effect for these light bulbs as it's kind of got a metallic, almost um, glass-like look to it. So that works really nicely there. Next, I use some null oil shade, and this is the dark shade, like a black shade. You've got a brown one, which is Agrax Earth shade, if you want a different look, but I went for null oil here. I want it to look a bit greasy and grimy. It's gonna be perfect for this, almost oily. So I'm just going over all the areas of um, that haven't been painted yet. So just going over all those silver areas that have only got the lead belcher on. And I don't care if a bit goes on onto the other areas, so I'm being quite scruffy here. Then I grabbed some Agrax Earth shade, and this brown is great for these grates. Great for the grates that I'm gonna be making uh, more rusty, and so I want this to have a brown base rather than a black base. Then I took some Contrast Blood Angels red, and this is where I go over that orange that we did earlier. And here you can see I'm not going right up to the edge, and so that's gonna just leave a really thin highlight around, barely noticeable, but a nice effect. And layering these two colors together gives us a really different red color. So I think it works really nicely doing it like this. And you can really take your time if you want, but I'm going quite fast. Then I took some typhus corrosion, and this is important to do when everything else is dry. And I take a really scruffy brush. You can see the state of this. And then I dip it in just a little bit of typhus corrosion, dot it on the paper towel, and then I just dab it around um, all over the model where I think it wants to look grimy, getting in all those metal parts. Use Again, using the texture of the model to work it in and then just dabbing it in all along these girder pieces that we're gonna make really rusty. And you can see what that does is really tones those oranges down. And so you don't see that orange we put on so prominent now that we did right at the beginning. Then I'm gonna put a little bit over the yellow and this is where I'm gonna go over it with some silver later on. So this is like a base to that. Next, I took some contrast Griffhound orange again. And this time I've hardly got any on the brush and if there's too much on there, I wipe it off on some kitchen towel. And then I'm just dotting it around on these grates. So again, use that texture to work the paint into the model. Then I took some Stormhost Silver layer paint. I got another very vegan makeup brush, super soft here. Dipped it in, these pots keep closing. Open up again, there we go. Get a bit of paint on the bristles, push it in. Bristles are a bit hard because I just washed the brush. And then work it in, soften it up. And then this is gonna give us a nice soft brush to do some dry brushing with. And here I'm just picking out those raised edges, just going gently at first, because I don't know how much is gonna come off the brush, 
and then just working over all the metal areas, even the ones we painted black and red, I'll pick out the raised areas of those and this is really going to define it all. It's going to really bring the piece to life and um, yeah, this is great. Using all the texture of the model, this is the best part because this is where you really see it coming together. So just working over it, taking my time, picking out those pieces, do it a few times if you have to. Sometimes you'll do a dry brush layer and then once it's completely dry, you'll think, oh, I need a bit more. So just go back to it and just do it in little stages though. Don't rush it. If you put too much on, it's going to be a nightmare to get it back. You almost have to go over all the stages again. So really worth just taking your time, being gentle at first and then building those layers up. So here you see I'm using that typhus corrosion as my base to really bring out this um, metal as if the paint's gone right back to the metal. It's been stripped off. And so we're doing one more technique after this and then we're almost finished and then that'll really make that pop out. And that next step is to get some riser rust dry paint, another little scruffy old brush. And you can see I'm dabbing a lot of that paint off on the paper towel and then dotting it on to the piece. So here, this is the grate that I want to be really rusty. So I'm putting quite a bit on there. You can use your finger and just rub it in. It works okay doing that, no problem. And then just dot it around. You can see getting a little bit thinner as I get out to the edge but really like deep orange in the middle. And then I'll move on to the girders and I can be a bit rougher once I've got most of that paint off. And then just gently around the area that we dry brushed with that silver, I'm gonna put a bit more rust on that just to show that exposed metal is being affected and starting to rust. And back on those girders, really getting it over the nuts and bolts, any little holes you imagine where any rust would naturally build up. Just put a little bit extra there and then keep working all over the model. And there we go, there's our ramshackle barricade, all painted with mostly contrast paints to a good tabletop ready standard. I was really happy with how this turned out. It was great doing some different techniques on the red and yellow. I think that's an improvement on the previous video I did for the scrap piles. And you can see here, we got an orc sneaking behind and now you can take some cover from these awesome barricades. I really love the terrain that came in this set. And here's one of the Krieg sniper hiding behind a radiator of all things, which is really funny to see included in here. And so you can see just how big it is. And that rust effect from all those different layers works really nicely. That riser rust really finishes it off well. And here's the other piece. On this, I just used some Corax white to just paint over the Orc skull logo there and that little arrow as well. So some really nice pieces. And when they're all together on the board, these are gonna be great to play with and line up really well with the scrap piles. Even though I did those colors a little bit different, they're both still gonna to work together. If you'd like to see that video for the scrap piles, then you can see that up on the channel already. You can see the difference there with the red and yellow. I've also done a how to paint those other barricades that came in the set and loads of other videos on there for Kill Team, including how to paint the measuring gauges. I think this makes a huge difference and certainly makes it a lot easier when you're reading the data cards and the rules. And then I've done some videos on how to build your Krieg kill team using the different operative options and also how to build the Orc Commando kill team. So there's loads of options, but such great models. And you can also check out the dice unboxing if you wanna get some custom dice for your kill teams, which I think is really fun. And then also a kill team Octarius unboxing. I love unboxing videos and so I really had fun doing this one. I'll put links to everything we use in this video in the description below and there'll be links to Wayland Games and Element Games and you can also pick up not just your paints but also the Kill Team Octarius game and all your Kill Team accessories too. It's 111 90 at the moment with Wayland Games and 99.99 with Element Games. So you're gonna save up to 20% on all your products. Really great value. But you also support the channel too, as I get a commission from any sales made. So thanks so much for that. It's really cool and I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the video. And this gave you some different ideas about how you might like to paint your terrain. And I really hope you're having a great time getting your Kill Team box set up and ready for battle but I'd love to hear what you think about the different techniques I've used in the comments section below. So join in and add any thoughts or feedback. It'd be great to hear from you. But thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description. And it'll be great to see you there.